Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to optimize your application when using an HTTP client by improving performance and memory usage with streams. So basically I will use streams with HTTP client while sending requests and reading the content from responses. I will use streams only with GET and POST requests because the logic from the POST request can be applied to PUT and PATCH. So let's hear a bit more about streams. The stream represents an abstraction of sequence of bytes in the form of files, input-output devices, or network traffic. Since we can read from or write to a stream, we can skip creating variables while sending those HTTP requests, which can increase memory usage or decrease performance. Now, the important thing to know here is that working with streams on the client side has nothing to do with the API level. This is a separate process. Our API may or may not work with streams, but this doesn't affect the client side at all. So this is a clear advantage since we can use streams in the client apps to increase performance, decrease memory usage, and still consume any API. Okay, so let's check the prepare project. Here, I already configured an HTTP client factory. And for this very case, I'm using a name factory. Of course, I will not talk about using HTTP Client Factory here because I already have a detailed video on this topic. If you want to learn more about how to improve your HTTP requests and how to use HTTP Client Factory with both named and typed clients, I strongly suggest watching that video. I will share the link in the description below. Also, you can see that I have registered a single HTTP Client Factory service. So, let's open that class. I already injected an IHTP client factory interface to use the HTTP client factory and also prepared some JSON configuration options. Okay, with all this prepared, let's see how we can use streams here. Just before I do that, I will quickly remind you about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can find linked in the description below. Feel free to check out the book if you want to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. And also, check out our Blazor course to create client c -sharp apps without using JavaScript. Again, the links are in the description below. Now, let's continue with the code. First, let's check the code developers mostly use when sending a request with HTTP client. Here, you can see four steps. Sending a request to the API's URI, waiting for the response to arrive, reading the content from the response body with the read as string async method and deserializing the content using system text json now there's nothing wrong with this code it looks great but with streams we can remove that action in the middle where we use the read as string async method to read the string content from the response body so let's see how to do that let's remove this method first instead I will create a new method to send a GET request using streams. It will be a private async method that returns task. And let's name it GET companies with stream. Next, I need an HTTP client variable. And to create that client, I will use the HTTP client factory field and call the create client method by providing the client's name the one I registered in the program class. Now, since I will work with the stream here, I need a using directive. And inside, I need a response variable. And then I will await the call to the get async method. I also need the route to the web API's action. Then, I want to ensure the successful status code is returned from my API. After I get that, I will create a stream and await the call the response.content.readAsStream async method. I use the readAsStream async method to serialize the HTTP content and return it as a stream. With this in place, I remove the need for string serialization and the string variable creation. Now, as soon as I have my stream, I will extract the result inside the company's variable by calling the JSON serializer .deserialize async method to read from a stream and deserialize the result into the list of company objects. Of course, I have to provide the stream as an argument and also options. Great. 
Now, before I start the app, I have to call this method in the execute method. And that's it. I can place the breakpoint here. And since my API is already started, let's run the app. As you can see, we have our results read from a stream. Awesome. Now, let's talk about one more improvement I can add to this code. I can improve the solution even more by using HTTP completion option as the second argument for the get async method. It is an enumeration having two values that control at what point the HTTP client's actions are considered completed. The default value is HTTP completion mode content read. It means that the HTTP option is complete only when the entire response is read together with the content. This is the case with the previous example I showed without using streams. The second value is HTTP completion mode headers read. When you choose this option in our HTTP request, we state that the operation is complete when the response headers are fully read. At this point, the response body doesn't have to be fully processed at all. This obviously means that we will use less memory because we don't have to keep the entire content inside the memory. Also, this affects performance since we can work with the data faster. That said, let's run the application again. And again, we see the same result as in the previous example, but this time we improved our request even more. Great. Now, let's see how to use streams with the post request. So, as I did with the previous example, let's first see the usual way of sending the post request with an HTTP client. In this example, I serialize the payload into a JSON string before I send the request. The rest is the same as with the previous example without a stream. Of course, with streams, we can skip that serialization part. Well, let's see how. So, let's create a new private async task method and name it create company with stream. In this method, I will again create a new HTTP client using the HTTP client factory and also create a new company for creation object with all the required properties. Then I need a memory stream object. Now let's await the JSON serializer .serialize async method to serialize our company for creation object into the created memory stream. Also, I need the seek method to set a position at the beginning of the stream. After the stream is prepared, I will create a request variable and initialize a new instance of the HTTP request message object with the required arguments for the request type, in this case post, and the API endpoint. Also, I can use the request variable to set the accept header of the request to application JSON. After that, inside the using directive, let's create a new string content object named request content using the previously created memory stream. The stream content object will be the content of our request. So let's use the content property and assign it the value of the request stream variable. Also, I need to populate the content type header of the request. And for that, I will use the media type header value constructor and pass the application JSON as an argument. Finally, I will send the request using the send async method where I provide the HTTP completion option argument. Ensure that the response is successful and read our content as a stream. After I have the content, I deserialize it into the created company object. So nothing we didn't already see in the previous example. So with this method, I work entirely with streams, avoiding unnecessary memory usage with large strings. Also, I'm using the response headers read completion option because it makes sense while working with streams. Now, all we have to do is to hide the previous call here and call this new method. Great. Let's place a breakpoint here, run the app, and inspect the result. As you can see, 
I have a new company created and returned as a response. As I already said, this code can be reused for both the put and patch requests. So, now you see how you can use streams with HTTP client and thus improving the performance and memory usage of your apps. And with it done, let's finish the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.